Kyle Ruddy from VMware's Technical Marketing Group. And today I'll be talking about what's new with vSphere 6.5's RESTful APIs. So we are transforming the vCenter APIs, making these APIs more developer and automation friendly. So if you didn't already know, vCenter 6.0 actually had a RESTful interface. However, it only worked for content library and tagging. Well, we've actually extended that into VM management as well as VCSA management. It should also be noticed, noted that this is not just a SOAP to REST conversion. This is all about taking those SOAP APIs and making them easier to use as well as making them function better and more consistently. We're also taking these automation tools and making them fully featured and easy to use, easy to integrate with. So therefore, it doesn't matter if you're using the Python SDK or you're using Power CLI. The calls should operate in a similar fashion and provide identical capabilities. So let's take a quick look at the documentation here. These docs are generated automatically, which allows us to give a consistent feel when switching between the APIs. We'll start by browsing through some of the appliance-based health areas. We can see a consistent and concise description of each area followed by the available operations, including the request URL and a brief overview. Clicking on the Get operation for the Appliance Management Service, we can see even more information, such as an example of a response in both JSON and XML formats, what the responses mean, and what potential error codes mean. Moving forward to the networking area of the appliance, we'll select the List operation for the DNS search domains. We see the similar set of information for this request as there was for the prior operation. Let's switch it up a bit and take a look at the vCenter API. Taking a look at the get operation for vSphere clusters, we can see the consistency in action. Even on a different API, we see the same sets of information in the same formatting as the prior API. Lastly, let's take a look at something that's a bit more verbose. How about the list operation for VMs? Here we can see the usage of filters as well as all of the information we're now used to seeing. Another key point for these new APIs is consistency. No matter how you choose to access these APIs, the request string and the output is consistent. We'll start by performing a request against the endpoint itself by way of the API Explorer. Let's do something simple, like checking what time it is on an appliance itself. The request is formed by looking at the appliance, system, time. Click the Try It Out button to perform the request locally on the endpoint, and we'll receive some great information, like an example curl statement, the request URL, and the response itself. Now let's do the same request, only with a third-party REST client called Postman that's freely available on the internet. We can see the familiar request URL and then click send to perform the request itself. So far, so good. How about a curveball, like using a newly available CLI called Data Center CLI? We drop in interactive mode and then enter that familiar request string of system time with the get operation, while also noticing the fantastic tab complete capabilities. Lastly, how about PowerCLI? We can access these new APIs by way of the CIS module. We'll store the output of the getCIS service commandlet, where we are referencing the request string of com.vmware.appliance.system.time, and then we'll perform the get operation against that service. And there we have it. Regardless of the language or the tool set, not only is the request consistent, but so is the response. For more information, visit pubs.vmware.com.